Hello, the 31st here. How's it going? Welcome back to another PowerPoint presentation. Today, as you can see, we're going to be talking about Pokemon Legends Arceus. Specifically, something from the trailer that's got me quite curious. Basically, the general gist of the games is that we are going to be pioneers. We're going to be the first people to go and explore the Sinnoh region, discovering all the new wild Pokemon that no one has ever seen before, even though we have played Sinnoh and know what they are. But something they say in the trailer, like I said, really has piqued my interest. They said that the landscapes, the environments of the Sinnoh region are not like the ones that we are familiar with. In this game, they're going to be different. And that got me thinking, how and why would that be the case? And so I've sort of come up with three big ideas as to why and how the region might be different. In the trailer, they have this book, which is basically like just a narrative device to get us into the story. But as you can see on the cover, there is a crude map of the Sinnoh region. And if we compare that map to the map that we know already, we can see that the two are very similar and just have a few slight differences. Mostly just in the outline of the Sinnoh region, and to be honest, we could probably put that down to old ancient cartography techniques that aren't as accurate as, as what is essentially satellite photography. The two most important features of the map are definitely Mount Coronet in the center, which they made a big deal about in the trailer. It sits there watching over the region, that hasn't changed, and the top right hand corner of the map. Where in the Diamond and Pearl map, we have an island. In this one, there is just a dark cloud obscuring that area of the map entirely. And I don't know, it kind of makes me think like they're hiding something that maybe that landmass isn't there anymore. But like I said, overall the two aren't too dissimilar. So, how and why could this be the case? Well, my first thought was obviously Arceus, right? This is its game and it's obviously going to play a huge role in the story. And I thought, well, maybe it has something to do why the region is different. Maybe it terraforms the region for humans or there is some kind of big fight or disaster in which Arceus devastates the land and it changes as a result. My next thought was Regigigas, right? Obviously in the Sinnoh myths, Regigigas is famous for moving continents with ropes and, and that would obviously you know, change the environments of the regions. And if we refer back to that map, like I said, there is a bit of land missing and that could be because Regigigas has moved the land and now there's either brought an island in or I actually don't remember the, the map of Sinnoh that well. It might be that beyond that small stretch of land in the top right extends an entire landmass that we just can't see. And that maybe these continents have been pulled together. Because the thing that always got me about Regigigas is mythology is that for people to know that Regigigas pulled landmasses with ropes, they would have had to see that. And maybe they did. Maybe, maybe at some point the people of Sinnoh witness him doing this and then lock it up as a result because they fear the power of Regigigas. And then my last thought, which is probably the most mundane, but also the most realistic, is us, is humans. I know it's not super exciting or a massive revolutionary theory, but humans have a way of just destroying everything they get their hands on. Changing environments and ecosystems is just something we tend to do. Rather than adapt to environments, humans tend to adapt those environments to suit them. By changing areas of vegetation into farmable land, into infrastructure, buildings and roads, and areas where cattle can graze. Thereby changing the natural environments, the habitats, the ecosystem, and the biodiversity of the creatures that live there. We are going to be sneaking around in the grass like a ninja, capturing the wild creatures, forcing them to battle each other, getting all up in their business and into their environments and habitats and ecosystems. In the trailer, they describe Sinnoh at this time as a vast wilderness where Pokemon roam as they please. Basically, a land untouched by human civilization where the creatures that live there live in a perfect balance and harmony that humans are probably going to interrupt. Especially given that humans seem to be new to the Sinnoh region in this game. In the trailer, they describe how people from all over have come together and formed this new village in the Sinnoh region. And that they are exploring, they are trying to find out more about this new land. 
And like I said, right, our job in the games, our role in the story is to go around and discover the new Pokemon of the Sinnoh region to explore its wilderness and its landscape and uncover its secrets. And just to emphasize my point and show you the impact that humans will have had on the Sinnoh region, in red on this map, I have highlighted all the man-made structures, all the buildings and roads and everything like that. As you can see, pretty much the whole Sinnoh region is covered in towns in roots, all made by people by carving out the natural environments. To do this, we would have had to destroy ecosystems to catch or relocate Pokemon. All these things will have a huge impact on the environment and change the region as we know it. Especially given that Pokemon do seem to have quite a large impact on their environments. Something this reminds me of is somewhere like Africa, where these untouched wildernesses were impacted by humans. Before humans, the wildlife lived in a perfect balance where herds of grazing creatures would come and destroy entire grassy landscapes in a sort of cycle as they migrated. But in doing so, they would fertilize the land and in migrating would give time for that area to basically regrow and be as it was before. And this went on for thousands if not millions of years when nature did its own thing and was in perfect harmony. And then humans came along and just fucked it all up. And I can imagine it being similar in Sinnoh, where because it's a region untouched by humans as far as we're aware, any sort of human interference is going to upset that balance that nature has found for itself. So yeah, maybe not the most flashy or spectacular theory anyone's ever done, but like I said, I think it's probably the most realistic and reasonable answer as to why the Sinnoh region is different. But let me know what you think. I would love to hear. I read every single comment. And if you have any thoughts or any theories or anything you want to hear about, leave it in the comments, please. I love reading it. And in today's video, you might have also noticed a few new whoopers who made their first appearances. Uh, probably not the best way to use them. But these two beautiful creatures were made by Norton's Love, and all of her links will be everywhere in the description. Amazing, amazing artist. Please, go commission her to do some art. Seriously, so happy with these. As you can see, we've got some new emotions for my good friend Wooper and Comfy. And hopefully one day I'll have a full set of every single emotion known to man and Pokemon. But yeah, seriously, insanely good artist. Go check her out. Worth every penny. With that said, thank you very much for listening. I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you some other time. Goodbye.